Hi, I'm Dave Sapera, and I'm going to show you how to sign things with Keybase. So the first thing that I want to talk about is why you would sign and when it would be appropriate to sign something versus encrypt it. Um, the most common scenario that you might come across as a developer is signing the binary for some software you release. So let's say you provide a signed compiled binary for x86, R, you know, ARM64, or AMD64, or ARM, um, whatever other platforms you support. Um, and people have a need to trust that you know these are malicious binaries, uh, that they're from this the authoritative source of the project, right? You know, at some point you have to trust the projects are malicious, and you trust that the, the maintainers of the project um, have your best interests in mind, and they're making the packages for you in a way that's not going to harm you. Um, signing is a good way to do that. You could sign the binaries, include the signatures along with the download links, and somebody could download both files and use Keybase. .io or just you know GNU PGP and, and verify the signature. Um, that's valuable um, in a way that you know um, Keybase brings trust and kind of a circle of trust and verification. So you could verify that you know my GitHub name is associated and verified with my Keybase.io and I have these binaries of a project that I maintain on GitHub and therefore you know you should be able to trust these binaries because I made them. Um, you, you know, that's it's a valid it's it's a valuable it's a valuable feature that you could use if you're releasing software. Um, you could also use it to verify a message. Um, you could verify uh, the release notes, for example, that they haven't been altered. So again, you could use a you could use a signature on a text file, and basically people could run that through Keybase or through PGP and verify that in fact you did sign that file and when. Um, it's related to your identity and it's also timestamped. And both of those things um, can't be altered without invalidating the signature. Um, you could use it as a, a way to sign documents as well. So in some countries, um, this kind of signature and documentation could be used to prove that a person signed that document, that they intentionally um, saw it and went through the process of clicking a signature button and typing in their password and signing that document. So um, there's a lot of different ways you could use this. It's, it's, it's actually been around for a really long time. I think I started using PGP in the 90s. And uh, it, it can be used uh, to transact business, to have servers trust each other and communicate. You know, SS, you know, signing is similar in some ways, but a different kind of format to how open, or for how SSL is negotiated. So it's, it's kind of everywhere. And it's an interesting way to communicate with people. You could compose an email and sign that email key base and paste that signed email in an email and the other person could, if they desired to or were suspicious of the source of the email, um, verify it. So let's look at what uh, key base provides for signing. So let's just go over all the commands it has. So we just used help. This is what shows help. Um, message allows you to sign a message. So we could go key base um, hello world and it's gonna, <laughs> you put the sign command in front. And we should have it spit out the signature here. So I could cut and paste this into an email and somebody could uh, decrypt that and get the message. And know that while it's not encrypted act technically, it's just signed. So in this is encoded um, the message itself and the information to look up my identity and verify that my identity did in fact sign this along with the timestamp and the, the signature itself. Uh, okay, so that's that's kind of cool. Uh, let's, let's go back here, sign H. Um, so you could also do that, and I'll put it as a binary. So again, we could go key base, sign, message, hello there, and go B. And this will spit out a bunch of unreadable binary. Not incredibly useful. You can see the unencrypted hello there. I just want to point out that this does not encrypt anything at all. It uses hashing and your public key to make assault, essentially. It's... It's not encrypting anything. So don't rely on this to send a secret message. Um, I'm gonna have a different video about encryption and the ways you can do that. Um, this is just about signing things right now. So again, you, there's an option for binary. You would use binary for servers talking to each other, um, blob storage in the database, stuff like that. Uh, you know, so more like machine level stuff. Um, there's another thing to do, which is clear sign. Clear sign includes the message as text above the signature. So this would be valuable for signing release notes or again, in an email context. Um, it's similar to this, but the message would be on top. And actually you could use dash M 
and the dash dash clear sign to make a file that has your message on top and the signature information below. The signature information will still include your message, um, but keep that in mind. So you wouldn't want to do that with binary files necessarily, but you would do it for text files or files people could read without a program interfacing in between them. Um, let's take a look at what that does really quick here. So key base sign, clear sign, and we'll just clear sign and release notes here. And we'll just cat that, take a look inside. Let's do the top. And you'll see here that it's got a signature. It also says begin PGP signature, not message, but it includes the message on top here. So this is the signed message and then the message below. Uh, again, so this would be good. I could cut and paste this in an email and send this off to somebody and they could run it through Keybase or a PGP program and they could verify my identity. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, Again, useful for, for usually text things. Um, so keybase, keybase, oh, let's, let's clear this screen. Keybase sign H. Okay, so there's one more we have here. I'm not gonna demonstrate output because I actually don't feel most people would ever use that feature, but if you need to, you could. Um, detach sign is a little different. So the first few signatures I made that went to file and actually uh, needed the file around or I shouldn't say didn't need the file around. So they included the message. So they included the file. So in theory, um, you don't need anything around. Now, detach sign is useful for the binary situation because you probably don't want to have a binary file that has to be decoded out of the signature to verify it. You want to have the file separate and the signature separate. So you would do that like this. All right, key base sign, detach sign, release notes. And that would create a a new signature and it's going to prompt me to overwrite and I will and if we cap that file you see that it's a little smaller than the previous one that's good and we can do a key base verify and it's going to ver should have verified it there oh I put the right extension there sorry about that so it's going to verify that I signed it um, if you were verifying the signature from me it would say that St. James Sapera signed it it tells you when so that's, that's interesting. And the, what's, what's interesting more so about this is if this doesn't work, this particular signature would not work unless there was a file called release notes.txt here. If I was to move release notes.txt to temp and run the same command again, it will fail. It'll be like, I don't know what we're comparing to because it doesn't contain the information we signed. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, again, it's useful in some cases, not all cases. Um, now I want to demonstrate something that's interesting. Let's take the signature we have right now. And let's alter the text file. Oh, I didn't. Well, I moved that. Okay, we're good now. Okay, so let's get in there and and you know, let's let's change this up a bit. Let's you know, let's totally did not add malware download and run as root like you know let's not be obvious right uh okay so we've had, we've edited this file so let's let's do the key base value you know verify on this again you know is this you know, let's say somebody edited this you know, this could be a, a binary file as well right uh, so the signature was made now using the signature of my key but look at this, we've got a, a bad signature. This signature was not made with my key or the, you know, essentially it couldn't be verified. I couldn't reproduce the signature with the information from, from my identity at Keybase.io. Um, this is the whole point is if somebody alters the file that you signed, either the actual file that goes with the ASC or altered the contents inside the ASC, um, they, it would be very difficult computationally to make the signature still match. It's a function of the time and the public key and the file. It's It would be difficult. So the whole point of the system is that you can trust, you know, if you trust the, my identity on keybase.io and you trust that the software that's doing this, you can trust that the signature is valid and that the software, as far as you trust the person who made it, is safe. And this is something that we actually use all the time. Um, Apple has a way of signing software that uses um, encryption that does essentially this. The, the file, the binary is there, it's not encrypted, it's just signed. 
right? And so it's not encryption, it's hashing. And it verifies that, you know, like that your identity, which is included with the binary and Apple's identity and Apple says, I, you know, Apple says, I trust James Sapera's certificate in so much that he's a, you know, he's paid for it to be issued by us and we have verified his identity some way and you trust us. And so you should trust the software. And, you know, that's the, the verified binaries or whatever Apple calls them. Windows has done this for actually quite a while. Um, it's kind of an optional thing, but you can do it in Windows as well. Um, I think Linux has an extension to do it as well. I haven't looked in a while. I know they were talking about that, but I mean, in theory, you can sign any binary as long as the system, you know, knows how to load that and parse that. It can say like, hey, wait a minute, this binary doesn't drive. You know, my certificates don't show that there's any trust here. Um, you know, and this works in the same, very much the same way of like SSL, where you could revoke a certificate, create, generate certificates, you know, you can make as many PGP keys as you want, but there's no circle of trust, which is what Keybase IO enables you to do. There's there's no reason to trust that signature. Um, so I hope this kind of makes sense in a way that like why you would use signatures and how you would use use them to facilitate, you know, like software um, or business. Um, you know, again, I encourage people to think about how you could use this to to imply that somebody has signed something. Uh, lots of times people struggle with like, you know, like I didn't sign that. Well, a system like this could be made to force people to recognize that, yeah, I did enter my password and, and sign that. And here's, here's when I did it, right? Um, you know, of course, password is the weak spot here. And that's something that we're solving in industry in different ways. But right now, this is, you know, kind of some of the best and most successful stuff we got. There are GUIs for, for PGP, but not necessarily Keybase, but Keybase is built on the PGP platform and you can actually use it with standard PGP tools. Um, Hope this is helpful. If you have any other things you want to know about Keybase, let me know. I'm going to also cover encryption.